it just rolls right off the tongue. Ella flata yogurt. Ella flata yogurt. And you can go online and get pronunciation guides of Icelandic people saying it. But I think the best thing to do is kind of to put on a Boston accent and it's kind of like, hey, you flat the yogurt. And then you'll always have it right and you'll never get it wrong in a dinner party. Hi, my name is Liz Cottrell and I'm a geologist at the Smithsonian Institution at the National Museum of Natural History and I work in the Department of Mineral Sciences. So everyone wants to know when is it going to end? Um, and I think that comes from uh, people not paying much attention to volcanoes erupting around the world. Uh, we have volcanoes uh, erupting all the time, all over the globe. It's just that this one is causing a teensy problem for the uh, airline industry and for travel. So most volcanoes have a median eruption duration of about seven weeks. And this volcano, Eyalafleti has been erupting uh, about seven weeks now, so we're at that median time. But the last time this volcano erupted, it went for over a year. And about 15% of volcanic eruptions in the last 10,000 years have lasted for over a year, uh, and we see no signs of this eruption ending anytime soon. So hold tight. I've had people emailing me saying, you know, I'm taking summer vacation in Paris. Am I going to be able to get there? Um, I understand that's frustrating, but volcanic eruptions tell us about the interior of the Earth. They're our window, our lens, into the interior of the planet. We live on this very thin skin. And the Earth is 6,731 kilometers in radius down to the core. We can't get samples from the interior of the Earth very easily. And volcanoes bring up material from the inside of the Earth and put it in our hands so that we can see it and study it. And this volcano is doing that for us and telling us uh, about how volcanoes all over the world work. Every volcano is a unique opportunity to learn about the planet's evolution. In terms of globally, what are the hot spots for volcanoes that we're really heavily monitoring? Uh, to understand, you know, that have human hazard potential. A key one would be Vesuvius. Um, that eruption in 79 AD caused the catastrophe at Pompeii. Man many people may know about that. And that volcano erupted about every 10 years for a really long time, up until 1944 uh, during World War II, and it hasn't erupted since. So we are definitely overdue for an eruption at Vesuvius, and there's a huge population at its base. A little bit closer to home, we have Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier also under a glacier, and that is one of the things that's been so unique about the volcano that's erupting in Iceland. It's also under a glacier, and that causes uh, much higher ash plumes from water getting into the magma chamber, converting to steam, and then being more explosive. Um, and also catastrophic meltwaters can send torrents of water down, uh, cascading down the sides of the volcano, and the whole uh, Seattle Tacoma metropolitan area is built on uh, these lahars, these you know toxic mixes of uh, cascading, tumbling water and mud and ash, uh, burying uh, large swaths of land. So Mount Rainier is definitely one in the United States we want to keep an eye on for big hazard potential. Okay, so how can we put this eruption in a historical context? How big is this eruption? That answer is going to continuously evolve because the eruption is ongoing. Okay, but as of today, it's about 0.1 cubic kilometer. But 0.1 cubic kilometer is the amount of stuff that's come out of this volcano. And just for reference, many people might remember Mount St. Helens that erupted in 1980. That was one cubic kilometer. So this volcano is just like a little fart in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, okay? It's a tenth the size of Mount St. Helens. And just to put that into a longer term perspective, okay, we had Tambora in the 1800s. And that was 150 times the size of Mount St. Helens. It impacted climate, and so that was 150 times bigger than Mount St. Helens. And then we have this, which is a tenth the size of Mount St. Helens. How big can eruptions get? Way, way, way bigger. Right here, striking close to home, we have Yellowstone. Yellowstone is a super volcano. Um, massive, massive eruptions uh, millions of years ago. Uh, there have been eruptions in India that have covered half the Indian continent and are postulated by some to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. So volcanoes range the whole size and here at Smithsonian we keep track of all of them so that we have a perspective going forward.